everyone, welcome back to Online Classroom Jeku Dio. In this video, we are going to look at one very important topic. It is the composition of water. All right. Why do I say that this is a very important topic? Because this is a topic that is very easy for you to master and understand. And there are a lot of questions that can come up from this one topic alone. The question can earn you maybe six to ten marks. All right. So pay special attention to this video. And if you find it helpful, remember to save it so you can visit it again for revision or share it with your friends. Let's go. So composition of water. What is water made of? Water is actually a compound which is made up of oxygen and hydrogen. Okay, very important. Oxygen and hydrogen that combine chemically, and the chemical symbol of water is H two O. If you look at the illustration here, you can see that this is one unit or this is one molecule of water. It has two hydrogen and one oxygen. That is why we say H two O. That means two hydrogen and one oxygen, and they are combined. Chemically, <clears throat> and Jacob Dio likes to tell the students that water molecules are like Mickey Mouse. Look at this picture. Doesn't it look like Mickey Mouse? It has two ears, and the ears are hydrogen. That's why we have H two, two hydrogen, and the face will be oxygen. Okay, and we can determine the composition of elements in a water molecule through a process called the electrolysis. This is what the main topic is all about: electrolysis. Okay, and what does this word mean? <clears throat> Let's take a look at this word: electrolysis. Electro means electricity. Okay, the current, electricity current, and lysis means breaking up. So we use electricity current, the help of electricity, to break up the water molecules so that we can break them out back into hydrogen and oxygen. All right, and the setup of the diagram or the setup of the apparatus is shown in this diagram. So we have electricity that comes from batteries. Okay, this is the symbol of batteries. All right, and then we have two electrodes. We have a beaker filled with water, and then we have measuring cylinder over the the electrodes. All right, first question that they can ask will be: They show you a picture of this setup, and then they will ask you what is the process shown in this picture in this diagram, or what is the process that we use to break up or to determine the elements in water molecules. So you need to be able to identify that this is electrolysis, and you need to be able to spell it correctly, and this will earn you one mark. All right. Next, let's take a look at this diagram. All right. Over here, Jacob Dio put it as K and L. In your exam question, it can be X and Y, M and N, A and B, and so on. And one very Popular question will be they want you to name the electrodes. All right, what is electrodes? Electrodes is the two black rods here. So, what is the name of the electrodes? First, you need to identify which one is positive and which one is negative. In order to do so, you need to refer to the batteries. So, let's look at the batteries here. The longer lines represent positive, and the shorter line represent negative. Not all exam question will give you a plus and minus sign, so you need to remember the longer line is positive, and you follow the longer line, and you can see that the longer line in this diagram is connected to electrode K, and then the shorter line is. Connected to the electrode L, so you know that K is positive and L will be negative. So what are their names? For positive, the name of the electrode is anode, and for negative, it's cathode or cathode. All right. So here are another two points. So electrolysis one point. The names of the electrodes another two points. Easily you get three points. Next. What do we put into the beaker here? 
Obviously, we need to fill it with water because we want to break up those water. But we also add in a uh, an extra special ingredient, and this is another question that they might ask you. In the question, they might write distilled water plus X, okay, or distilled water plus M, and ask you what is M. All right, so you have to remember we have to add in. A diluted acid, any form of acid that is diluted. All right. So remember one name of acid over here. The example that Jacutio gives you is dilute hydrochloric acid. So why do we need to add acid into the water? If you remember from the previous video, Jacutio say that water is a very poor electric conductor. So if we do not use the acid, then the water cannot carry the electricity well, and hence the electrolysis will happen very slowly. Okay, so we need to improve the conductivity of the water. So your answer will be if if the question asks why, your answer will be the dilute hydrochloric acid is added to distilled water because water is a poor electricity conductor. Or you can use another way to express your answer, saying that dilute hydrochloric acid is added to distilled water to increase the electric conductivity of the water. All right. So next, let's take a look at those two electrodes. When we turn on the circuit, when I turn the switch on, that means I press it down. What happened is you will start to observe bubbles coming out from these two electrodes, and the measuring cylinder of K and L they will start collecting gases, two different gases. Can you guess what those gases are? Well, it is of course hydrogen and oxygen because waters are being separated or broken up right now when we turn on the switch, and the electricity will flow through the water. So hydrogen and oxygen will each go to different cylinder. So the big question now is which gas go to which cylinder? Okay, so. Anode will start collecting oxygen gas, and cathode will start collecting hydrogen gas. Here are another two points that you can get. But how do I remember that Jacutio is a little confusing? So I have a little tips to help you remember which gas go to which electrode. Let's look at K and L. We know that K is a positive. Electrode and L is negative, so make sure you write it down with a bracket. And when you look at this positive sign with a bracket, what does that remind you of? For Jacutio, it reminds me of ambulance. So in ambulance, there's always oxygen supply. We, if we do not have enough oxygen, we might die, and we might need an ambulance, right? So oxygen go to the ambulance, the plus sign. How about the negative sign, the minus sign? If you take a look at this negative and a bracket, it looks like the letter H. So H represent hydrogen. So that's how Jacutio remember. I hope you can remember too. Okay. Next, we'll look at the ratio of the volume of gas, and it is very important that we note. What is the order that the question wants? For example, if the per the question says, "What is the ratio of anode to cathode?" If they mention anode first, or if they mention K first, we need to know that K positive oxygen. This is oxygen, so the answer will be one. And then for H hydrogen, the answer will be two. Why? Because we have two hydrogen and one oxygen, so the answer is one to two. All right. If it goes the other way, cathode two anode L to K, then the the answer will be two to one. The order is very important. Next, how do I know that the gases that is collected, or the gas that is collected in K, is definitely oxygen and L, a hydrogen? Because both gases that we collect has no color. 
they look the same how do i know if they are really oxygen or hydrogen that's where we need to do the testing for these gases so for oxygen how do we test the gas we can test it by using a glowing wooden splinter so the word glowing is very important what does glowing means look at the picture here the wooden splinter has the glowing end it does not have any fire it does not light up there's no flame it's just a glowing wooden splinter so for oxygen we test it with glowing wooden splinter why because oxygen is a gas that helps in combustion or in another word oxygen is needed to light up a fire all right so if this cylinder or if this test tube has oxygen in it then the observation is the splinter will reignite meaning you will see it catch on the fire again there is a fire or there's a flame again on that wooden splinter all right so this is very important you need to remember how about hydrogen well hydrogen is an explosive gas meaning it will explode but do not worry in this little test tube there's only a small amount of hydrogen so it is not dangerous but if you have a huge amount of hydrogen then yes big explosion might happen so in this case you do not have to worry and we test with another type of wooden splinter it is a burning wooden splinter why look at this picture we have the flame we can see the fire a little fire there all right so to use um, to to test the gas hydrogen we need to use burning wooden splinter and what is the observation you will hear a pop sound a little explosion that happened remember it is a pop sound it just go pop that's all all right do not write boom just like this little picture here b-o-o-m no there will be no huge explosion it's just a little one so write p-o-p -P, pop so again this is very important you have to remember the name of this process electrolysis the name of the uh, electrodes the anode the cathode and why do we add in a dilute hydrochloric acid and which gas goes to which electrode and also you have to know how to prove or how to tell that the, the gas in uh, the, the cylinder K and L is oxygen or hydrogen all right if you find it useful remember to save it and to share it with your friend well that's all from Jegutio in this video. I shall see you in the next video. Okay? Bye. If you have learned something new from this video, don't forget to like and subscribe.